good morning all today we are going to discuss the another chapter in the first unit and that is mycoplasma okay we have discussed the, up till now the first chapter viruses okay in the viruses we have discussed the, how the viruses were discovered then the definition of the viruses also we have discussed the, about the general characteristic features of the viruses then classification of the viruses based on the host then the ultra structure of the tobacco mosaic virus and in the last lecture we have discussed about the multiplication of the viruses how the viruses multiply in the host cell okay and today we are going to discuss the another microorganisms and these are mycoplasma okay the second chapter of our syllabus is the mycoplasma okay in the syllabus we have discussed that the unit first of our paper diversity of cryptogam it deals with the study of the microorganisms okay of this now uh, we have discussed the viruses and now we are going to discuss the another microorganisms and these are mycoplasma okay mycoplasma mycoplasma first of all regarding the history or how the mycoplasma was discovered okay the mycoplasma these are the smallest known independently replicating aerobic prokaryotes but these prokaryotic organisms are without the cell wall okay the best example of the prokaryotic uh, organism is the bacteria but mycoplasma these are differing from the bacteria that the mycoplasma these are not having the cell wall okay the bacterial cell it is also prokaryotic cell but the bacterial cell it is having the well developed uh, cell wall okay but in the mycoplasma these are also the prokaryotic organisms we, but these are without cell wall okay the mycoplasma these are the probably the smallest known independently replicating and strictly aerobic prokaryotic organisms without the cell wall okay the mycoplasma they were firstly reported by the pascher in the 1843 okay while he was uh, studying the pleuro pneumonia in the cattle okay he was studying the pleuro pneumonia in the cattle and he designated the causative agents of the pleuro pneumonia in the cattle as a pleuro pneumonia like organisms okay the short form is the pplo okay in the 18 1843 pascher was studying the pleuro pneumonia disease in the cattle and he Uh, he discovered that the pleuro pneumonia in the cattle it is uh, due to the certain type of the microorganisms and these organisms were referred as the pleuro pneumonia like organisms by the pascher okay in the short form of the pleuro pneumonia like organism he used as the pplo but he was unable to isolate he could not isolate these uh, microorganisms on the standard nutrient medium and also he he has not observed uh, these microorganisms under the microscope okay pascher though he reported the first mycoplasma but he was he could not isolated these microorganisms on the nutrient medium and he could not observe it under the microscope okay but in the 1898 these microorganisms were first isolated and cultured by the e nocard and the e r raux okay these microorganisms were first isolated and cultured by the e nocard and the e r raux in the 1898 okay these organisms were named as astrococcus mycoides these organisms were termed as the astrococcus mycoides by the borel et al in the 1910 okay and the generic term mycoplasma it was given by the novak in the 1929 due to their fungi like resemblance okay due to their fungi like resemblance the terminology mycoplasma it was firstly used by the novak in the 1929 
okay generic name mycoplasma was given by the novak in the 1929 due to their fungi like resemblance okay then edward et al in the 1967 proposed the new class proposed the new class molecules okay molecules this word it is made up of two latin words mollis means the soft and the pliable pliable uh, or the cutis means the skin okay mollis means the soft and pliable and the cutis means the skin and the molecules this terminology is uh, referring that these are the organisms which are lacking defined cell wall okay edward et al in the 1967 proposed the new class molecules and organisms prokaryotic organisms without the cell wall these were included in this new class okay molecules it is a latin term and it is made up of two latin words the mollis means the soft and pliable and cutis means the skins okay that is all regarding the history or the discovery of the myco plasma okay now the habit and the habitat habit and habitat all the mycoplasma all the mycoplasma reported these are some of the mycoplasma these are parasitic while some of the mycoplasma are saprophytic okay para parasitic and the saprophytic saprophytic means that is growing these are deriving their nutrient from the dead organic material okay the mycoplasma these are parasitic as well as saprophytic okay then the mycoplasma these are found to be associated with the sewage sewage water these mycoplasma these are present in the sewage water then in the plants also the animals then insects then humus organic matter hot water springs some of the mycoplasma some of the species of the mycoplasma these are found in the hot water springs okay and other high temperature environment okay mycoplasma these are found to be associated with the sewage water plants animals insects humus hot water springs and other high temperature environment okay even some of the mycoplasma these are found in the human body okay then these mycoplasma these are the common contaminants in the tissue culture which is rich in the organic medium okay mycoplasma these are the common contaminants in the tissue culture rich in the organic medium okay and also these mycoplasma these are found in the different uh, substrates of human animals and the plants okay mycoplasma these are found in the different substrates of the human animals and the plants then regarding their classification okay depending upon their nutritional requirement depending upon their nutritional requirement the these mycoplasma these are classified into the three groups okay whether these are depending upon the cholesterol or not depending upon this one these were classified into the three groups okay mycoplasma depending upon their nutrient requirement are classified into the three group the first group is the mycoplasma another one is the acoloplasma and the third one is the thermoplasma okay three groups first one is mycoplasma second one is acoloplasma and the third one is the thermo plasma the first one is the mycoplasma mycoplasma that is these are requiring the cholesterol for their growth okay mycoplasma they require cholesterol for their growth okay and generally these group these species of this group they parasitize on animals including the human being okay they parasitize on the animals including the human being okay there is these mycoplasma these are parasitic and these are infecting the mucous membrane and the joints of the uh, human joints of the human beings and the animals okay these are parasitic and they infect the mucous membrane and joints of the human beings and the animals okay then the second group is the acoloplasma 
a coliplasma they does not require the cholesterol for their growth okay they not require cholesterol for their growth and this group it is available in the sewage water and the soil as saprophytes okay saprophytes deriving the deriving their nutrition from the dead organic material okay a coliplasma these are available in the sewage water and soil as saprophytes and in vertebrates and also in plants as the parasites okay these are also present in the plants as the parasites then the third group of the mycoplasma is the thermoplasma thermoplasma they does not require cholesterol for their growth okay thermoplasma these are also type of mycoplasma which does not require the cholesterol for their growth okay these are aerobic microorganisms which prefer acidic ph they prefer the medium these are growing in the medium which is having very low ph that is ph is very acidic okay with the ph which is ranging from 0.96 to the 3 and with an optimum temperature of 59 degrees centigrade okay as these are growing these are growing in the higher temperature that's why these are referred as the thermoplasma okay thermoplasma they not require cholesterol for their growth and these are the aerobic microorganisms which prefer acidic ph between 0 0.96 to 3.0 with an optimum temperature of 59 degrees centigrade okay then we are moving towards the general characters of the um, mycoplasma general characters of the mycoplasma the mycoplasma these are unicellular okay mycoplasma these are unicellular probably the smallest known organisms then these are non-motile these are non-motile means they cannot move themselves from one place to the another place okay unicellular smallest non-motile and prokaryotic organisms forming the fried egg shaped colonies okay these are forming the fried egg shaped colonies okay then another important thing in the um, character of the mycoplasma is that there is a absence of true cell wall okay the function of the cell wall is to give the um, proper shape to the uh, cell okay but here the true and rigid cell wall is entirely absent and that's why the mycoplasma are highly plastic okay highly plastic these are highly deformable irregular and variable in the shape okay these are deformable irregular and variable in the shape variable in the shape we can refer it as a pleomorphic that is they can change their uh, shape okay no two mycoplasma are, are identical to each other okay in their shape these are highly deformable irregular and variable in the shape that we can refer it as a pleuromorphic okay it is can be referred as the pleomorphic these are changing their shape okay various shapes in the photograph you can see the mycoplasma they may be rod like ring like or these are globoid or filamentous they may be spherical or they may be uh, pear shaped structures they may be cocoid they may be granular okay these are the different shapes of the mycoplasma okay the mycoplasma they may be rod like ring like globoid filamentous spherical's okay they may be cocoid then uh, they may be pear shaped or they may be cluster like okay if the filamentous again if the mycoplasma are filamentous then the filamentous mycoplasma they may be again branched and the unbranched okay thus due to the absence of the rigid cell wall these are highly deformable and variable in their shape okay these are of various shapes 
okay there is a so much variability in the shape of the mycoplasma the no two forms of the mycoplasma are alike okay there is a so much variability in the shape of the mycoplasma therefore no two forms of the mycoplasma are alike okay and the mycoplasma these are believed to be the intermediate organisms between the bacteria and the viruses okay mycoplasma these are believed to be the intermediate organisms between the bacteria and the viruses okay because the viruses these are the simple entities which are made up of only two components okay centrally present centrally present um, genetic material either dna or the rna and which is um, this genetic material which is well protected by the protein code but the bacteria these are the prokaryotic organisms having the cell wall but here the mycoplasma these are simple microorganisms but these are completely lacking the cell wall okay mycoplasma these are unicellular these are prokaryotic but these are without cell wall and therefore the mycoplasma these are believed to be the intermediate organisms between the bacteria and the viruses okay then the mycoplasma these are uh, known to be the simplest form of life capable of independent growth and uh, metabolism okay these are believed to be the simplest form of life capable of independent growth and metabolism okay capable of independent growth and metabolism okay then these mycoplasma these are of gram negative stain okay the generally that is um, the mycoplasma the and the bacteria that is these are gram negative or the gram positive okay generally when the mycoplasma these are stained with the dyes generally the when the mycoplasma these are stained or treated with the certain type of the dyes that means these uh, mycoplasma cannot retain their color of the dyes they cannot take the color of the dyes and that's why these are believed to be the gram negative stain okay they does not get colored when these are exposed to the dyes okay these are exposed to the dyes they cannot get colored and that's why the mycoplasma these are believed to be the gram negative stain then the mycoplasma these are non motile these are non motile but some of the mycoplasma they may show the gliding movement okay they some show the gliding movement then the reproduction in the mycoplasma takes place just like in the bacteria okay the principal method of reproduction in the mycoplasma is the binary fission and the budding okay how actually the binary fission and the budding takes place we will discuss these two methods in detail while discussing the bacteria okay reproduction of by reproduction in the mycoplasma takes place by the binary fission or the budding and we will discuss these two methods of the bacteria okay then these mycoplasma these are very sensitive to the antibiotics like the oxy tetracycline chloramphenicol streptomycin erythromycin etc okay that means uh, suppose that the human beings or the certain type of the animals these are infected with the mycoplasma then if these antibiotics are given to the human being given to the human being he will recover from the infection of the mycoplasma okay mycoplasma these are certain species of the mycoplasma these are parasitic these are infecting the human being okay and if that human being he is uh, treated with the these uh, um, uh, antibiotics like the oxy tetracycline chloramphenicol streptomycin and erythromycin then he will recover from the infection of the mycoplasma okay because the mycoplasma these are very sensitive to the antibiotics like the oxy tetracycline chloramphenicol streptomycin and erythromycin okay but the mycoplasma these are insensitive to the penicillin ampicillin methicillin etc 
okay if the human being these are infected with the mycoplasma and uh, treatment of antibiotics like the penicillin ampicillin and methicillin is given then the treatment is not effective okay generally these antibiotics are used for the bacterial infections okay because these antibiotics these are mainly uh, acting on the bacterial cell wall okay these are mainly acting on the bacterial cell wall okay but here in the mycoplasma mycoplasma they are completely lacking the cell wall in the mycoplasma the cell wall is entirely absent and that's why the penicillin ampicillin and methicillin does not show any effect on the mycoplasma okay that's why the mycoplasma these are insensitive to the penicillin ampicillin methicillin etc due to the absence of the cell wall okay then these mycoplasma these can be isolated in the pure form and they can be cultivated on the medium which is rich in the cholesterol proteins phospholipids mucin and the nucleic acid okay in the laboratory the mycoplasma these can be isolated and these can be cultured on the nutrient medium which is very rich in the cholesterol proteins phospholipids mucin and the nucleic acid okay the growth of mycoplasma on the growth medium the growth of the mycoplasma on the nutrient medium it can be stimulated by adding the yeast extract to the nutrient medium the nutrient medium made yeast extract add kela tar tachi growth fast hote okay the growth of the mycoplasma it can be stimulated on the nutrient medium by adding the yeast extract to the nutrient medium then the optimum temperature which is required for the growth of the mycoplasma is 36 to 37 degree centigrade okay the optimum temperature required for the growth of the mycoplasma is the 36 to 37 degree centigrade okay then the structure of the mycoplasma structure of the mycoplasma in the photograph you can see you can observe the structure of mycoplasma a structure of typical cell of the mycoplasma okay. the cells are small the mycoplasma these are unicellular and the cells of the mycoplasma these are small varying from 300 nanometer to the 800 nanometer in diameter okay the cells of the mycoplasma are very small varying from 300 nanometer to 800 nanometer in diameter okay then in this figure you can see here the cell of the mycoplasma it is surrounded by the triple layer of lipoproteinous unit membrane okay the cell it is well protected it is well surrounded by the triple layered lipoproteinous unit membrane which is about 10 nanometer thick okay the cell wall is entirely absent in the mycoplasma okay the cell wall is entirely absent in the mycoplasma and the cell it is enclosed by the triple layered lipoproteinous unit membrane which is about 10 nanometer in thick okay this is triple layered lipoproteinous unit membrane which is enclosing the cytoplasm okay which is enclosing the cytoplasm okay in the cytoplasm here you can see the ribosomes okay here you can see the ribosomes and the nucleic acids are okay nucleic acids are present here the dna you can see the dna okay within the cytoplasm the ribosomes and dna are present okay within cytoplasm rna ribosomes and the dna are present okay then the ribosomes are 14 nanometer in diameter the ribosomes are 14 nanometer in diameter and these are 72s type okay these are 72s type okay here you can see the nuclear material it is a nucleoplasm like structure nucleoplasm like structure because here the in the uh, well developed nucleus is 
entirely absent as it is a typical prokaryotic cell and in the cytoplasm the genetic material is present okay that's why in the cytoplasm we can say the nucleoplasm like structure is present okay we, in the cytoplasm you can see the genetic material dna rna and the ribosomes are present the ribosomes are 14 nanometer in diameter and the 72s type okay then here you can see in the photograph in the figure the dna it is a double stranded structure okay dna it is a double stranded helix then the DNA, it is characterized, it is having the low guanine and the cytosine content than the bacterial DNA. Okay, that is the difference between the bacterial genome and the my, uh, mycoplasma genome. Okay, in the mycoplasma, the guanine and the cytosine content, it is less in the DNA when it is compared with the bacterial DNA. Okay, the DNA of the mycoplasma, it is, uh, it is having low guanine and the cytosine content than the bacterial DNA. Okay, the DNA is up to the 4% and RNA, it is about 8%. Okay, the amount of DNA present in the mycoplasma is 4% and RNA is about 8%. Okay, the genetic material which is present in the mycoplasma is less than half that usually occurs in the other prokaryotes. Okay, for example, when the, we compare the amount of genetic material of mycoplasma with the bacteria, we can say the genetic material present in the mycoplasma is less than half that usually occurs in the other prokaryotes or the bacteria okay then we can say it is uh, mm, perhaps the mycoplasma these are the prokaryotic organisms which are having the lowest limit of genetic material required for the cellular organisms okay you can say that the mycoplasma these are the prokaryotic organisms perhaps which are having the lowest limit of genetic material which is required for a cellular organism okay then the guanine and the cytosine content in the dna it ranges from 23 to 46 percent okay the guanine and the cytosine content in the dna it ranges from the 23 to 46 percent okay then the mycoplasma uh, just we have discussed in the habit of the mycoplasma the mycoplasma these are parasitic as well as saprophytic okay parasitic means these are infecting the plants animals and even the human beings Okay, and here in this slide, we are going to discuss the diseases which are caused by the mycoplasma. Okay, here the diseases which are caused by the mycoplasma. Okay, generally in the plant, the mycoplasma, when it affects the any plant, it will uh, be responsible for the uh, deficiency in the hormones okay for example the it will show the different symptoms like the dwarfness then loss of a phycal dominance then enlargement of floral buds then bunchy growth of newly formed sprouts okay it may show the symptoms like dwarfness loss of apical dominance enlargement of floral buds bunchy growth of newly formed sprouts Okay, here the different types of the plant diseases are summarized. You can see in this slide the little leaf disease of brinjal. Okay, little leaf disease of brinjal, then bunchy top of papaya, big bird of tomato, witch's broom of legumes, yellow dwarf of tobacco, strip disease of sugarcane, clover dwarf, and cotton virescence. Okay, these are the different types of the diseases which are caused by the mycoplasma in the different types of the plants. Okay, then the mycoplasma, 
it also infects the human being okay generally it is responsible for the pneumonia for a primary atypical pneumonia which is caused by the mycoplasma pneumonia okay which is caused by the mycoplasma pneumonia in the human being the mycoplasma it may infect uh, important organs like uh, it infects the respiratory organ then central nervous system cardiovascular system and urogenital system okay the mycoplasma it infects the principal organs in the human beings like the respiratory organs central nervous system cardiovascular system and urogenital system okay here the mycoplasma pneumonia it is mainly responsible for the pneumonia in the human being then another extensively studied mycoplasma is the mycoplasma hominis which causes the pneumonia okay which causes the pleuropneumonia then prostatitis prostatitis means inflammation of the prostate glands okay prostatitis it is the inflammation of the prostate gland then inflammation of the genitals okay inflammation of the genitals for example inflammation of the urethra okay the mycoplasma hominis it is responsible for the pleuropneumonia prostatitis means the uh, inflammation of the prostate gland then inflammation of the genitals and also it is responsible for the endocarditis endocarditis i have not mentioned it but remember just that the mycoplasma hominis it is also responsible for the endocarditis endocarditis the endocarditis endocardium that is the uh, this is the um, wall of the heart of the heart valves these are made up of endocardium that means the inflammation of the heart valves it is referred as the endocarditis which is due to the infection of the mycoplasma hominis in the human being okay then the another uh, species of the mycoplasma you can see the mycoplasma fermentans mycoplasma fermentans it is responsible for the infertility in the human being okay mycoplasma fermentans is the species of mycoplasma which is responsible for the infertility in the man okay are the different types of the diseases which are caused by the mycoplasma in the human being okay it is infecting the human being and it is uh, responsible to damage the respiratory organs central nervous system cardiovascular system and urogenital system okay then the mycoplasma these are infecting the animals mycoplasma agalactica here one species you can see the mycoplasma agalactica causes the agalaxia of goat and the sheep okay it is responsible for the agalactia of goat and the sheep agalactia means the failure of mother to produce the milk here the goat and the sheep they will fail to produce the milk okay the mycoplasma agalactia is the species of mycoplasma which is infecting the animals and it causes the agalactia of the goat and the sheep agalactia means the sheep and the goat they were and they may be unable to produce the milk after the infection of this species okay then the another species is the mycoplasma mycoides which causes the pleuropneumonia of the cattle mycoplasma mycoides causes the pleuropneumonia of cattle and uh, another species the of the mycoplasma is the mycoplasma bovi genitalium mycoplasma bovi genitalium causes the inflammation of the genitals of the different animals okay that is all about the mycoplasma okay we have completed the second chapter of our syllabus and that is mycoplasma okay thus we have completed the two chapters of our syllabus the first one viruses and the another one is the mycoplasma
in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the another chapter another microorganism and that is bacteria okay that is all for today i call